That's what he's trying to get the church back to. Everybody say I got to be plugged in. Woo. Boy, I ain't got off my first. Hmm. So sent means to commission, to set apart for a special service. It means to send a message by someone. So stop talking for yourself and deliver the message of the king. That's supposed to be our only conversation. We talk about everything else. We get on Facebook. You know, me and my best friend, we ain't best friends no more. Well, nobody care about that. A platform being created to preach the gospel. We are there preaching everything else. You know, one of my, one of my shoes is a little bigger than the other one. Well, stretch your foot out. Fit it. You know, I don't like people. We, come on now. We put all this stuff out there, and when you get through weeding it out, it's like, ain't nothing out here. FYI, stop telling all your business. Because the ones you're telling it to, they don't care. They ain't going to help you fix it. You know yourself, you see stuff, you be like, that just is crazy. If you got crazy in the church, how are we going to get the Great Commission done? I can't hear nobody now. Save, sanctify, fear with the Holy Ghost, and crazy. Don't none of that go together. Don't none of that go together. I'm saved, but crazy. Sanctified, but crazy. Deal with the Holy Ghost. Crazy. Somebody just lied. So we got to be sent. Say, I got to be sent. I'm drilling this because when you understand that you're sent, you get up off of these excuses that's been running your life. And it'll turn your attention to your purpose. And you become focused on it like a laser. When everybody's focused on, their, on what they're sent to do, on their assignment, on their purpose, and then they can fulfill their destiny. Now you're ready for placement. You're ready to be placed. Because when you start learning the, the things of God, the ways of God, you, you start seeing why he told you to do certain things. It is like folks say, if it was me, I wouldn't be over there. You're not my placer. You don't place me. Hello. There's too many folks letting their friends and family place them. It's the wrong placement. If we're eating off of the exquisite uh, dinnerware. Don't come walking in here trying to give somebody one of them uh, three-section styrofoam plates. You messing up what we're doing here. You cheap and you trying to fit your cheap in with our exquisite. That means you and your cheap have got to go. He said, I don't believe God even thinks that way. Okay, let me tell you a story. Not a lie, a story. In the book of Acts, it's right in there where God's thoughts are. In the book of Acts, uh, th this, this guy who was a deacon, but filled with the Spirit of God, had passion for God. He got up in his in-between time of deaconing and went and started holding evangelistic, evangelistic outreaches. Started holding crusades. Went down to Samaria and preached. And all these folks got saved. They got turned on to the word of God. And there was a guy who was, uh, had, he was a sorcerer. And he had baffled the people of that whole city, that region. They, they said, ooh, he's a great power of God. He baffled them with powers of darkness. When he got through, when the man of God got through preaching, he got saved. 
and follow Philip. I think it was Philip. Follow them everywhere. Followed him everywhere on his heels. And then the Jerusalem council, the leadership of the church, heard what was going on. They sent Peter and John to check it out. And when they arrived, they got them filled with the Holy Ghost. And then when this ex-sorcerer saw that the people, when hands were laid on them, they received the power of God. So it wasn't just, no, no, no. Some power was released to transform things. The power that connects you to the Great Commission. Because they didn't say, they didn't go to heaven, they still here. So they're here for a reason. Same reason we're still here. They connected. And so this guy saw that and he came to Peter with some money. I, let me buy this power. Let me give you this money so I can have this same power. Because he was used to baffling people because it was about him. But in this one, it ain't about you. And Peter looked at him and Peter said, you and your money can go to hell. They say it in my Bible. He said, you and your, he said, your money perishes with you. Translate it. You and your money can go to hell. Because you're trying to come at the things of God for the wrong reasons. I can't hear nobody in here. See, sent ones. Wow. When you read the scripture, you see it all through the place. Peter and John were with the Lord. You can't tell me nothing about the Lord. I've been, I was with him. I touched him. He rebuked me quite a few times, but I was there. You weren't there. Were you there? No. You can't tell me now. They weren't like that. The leadership of the Jerusalem council sent them. Sent them. Check this out. And bring back a report. When they got there, because they are sent, they walked into power of the sender. That means he ran right in, they ran right into a sorcerer, one who had been a sorcerer, was still operating because his soul is still in sorcery. Hello. I'm telling y'all, there is a power that God is ready for us to be connected to. His name is Holy Spirit. He's been here all the time. Am I making sense here? Man, this is, I got two minutes. So the church, our assignment is apostolic. Say I'm, it's apostolic. Being apostolic means that it's a group of sent ones. We're sent. That means when you're sent, you're plugged into the power. You're plugged into the power. You see the way he sees. Because he'll show you what he sees. You're plugged into the power. You don't, you're not quick to open your mouth. You only say what he tells you to say. Let your words be seasoned with salt. Hello. Stop cussing folks out. And after you get through cussing them out, say, well, Lord, you know, I'm sorry. But I did mean it. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry I said those words. You, you don't have to use a cuss word to be cussing at folks. Hey, ain't nobody saying that. I'm to my saints. I, I see you on Facebook. Cussing at folk. Cussing at your children. Sit your whole crazy self down. I don't know what's wrong with these kids. You call them crazy. Now they're acting out your words. Let's call somebody called you crazy. When you were little. Wow. <laughs> so the early church was birthed and operated under the apostolic anointing. The sent ones. God sent Christ and then Christ sent 
the apostles. And then he sent the Holy Spirit. He sent them and he said, wait in Jerusalem because I'm sending another comforter. He's just like me, but he can be everywhere. And he came. And the Holy Spirit separates and sins. If we don't know how he operates, we will fight him every step of the way. Hmm. So the basic meaning of apostle is sent. I'm driving this home and I'm coming to this point about apostles because this office for the last 20, 25, 30 years is being restored to the church. People in church have been trained to just acknowledge, well, they say they call. So they'll say Reverend, preacher. Even in some churches, those who should be serving run the church. Preacher can't tell you nothing. Preach to me. Make me feel good. Help me to get something. Don't tell me how to live. Preach to me. Don't pastor me. The shepherd, when a sheep would get sideways, Many times those shepherds, the one that's just a, a hard head, you know, Lou Willie. Lou Willie sheep. Always wandering off over by the bushes where the lions, tigers, and bears, and old mice hang out at. And he told them, well, keep yourself away from over there. Every time you look up with Lou Willie over there. Lou Willie is valuable. So what does, what does the shepherd do? Break his leg. You seen them carrying the, the, the sheep on their shoulder? That's because they broke his leg. And they carry him. And as they carry him, that sheep becomes bonded to the one that carries him. When you become bonded, you'll listen. So you don't have to say, Lil Willie sheep, get yourself over here. Get your old crazy self over here, Lil Willie. Tired of fooling with you over here. Get over here. When he break that leg, you can just say, Yes, sir. I think it's a whole lot of loose sheep. Probably need their leg broke. Look at your neighbor and say, you need your leg broke? Let, let me read this scripture here. My God, I don't sound like I'm getting nowhere. Romans chapter 10, verse 13 through 15. It says, for, this is out of the uh, uh, New King James, I believe. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 15, and how shall they preach? unless they are sent. So the basic meaning of an apostle, of the word, the title apostle, is sent one. It means a delegate, an ambassador of the gospel, an official commissioner of Christ with miraculous power. It, mean, it means that they're a messenger. And I made mention of this before, but it's worth saying it again. Many of these that were apostles, well, let me back up. Apostles originated with the Greeks and the Romans. Footnote for you Bible scholars. The New Testament was written in the Greek language. The Greek language what, in the New Testament, there are no new words. These words existed before. Yeah. The Hebrew language, what the Old Testament was written in, is a language of pictures. You say a word and it paints a picture. That's where we get the phrase, a picture is worth. That's where it comes from. 
the Greek language is very detailed. And to create situation to make it very detailed in its explanation, they'll combine words. But if you understand the Greek language, what we got has been translated. But a lot of the detailed meanings get lost. Hmm. So, watch this. The word apostle originated from the Greeks and the Romans, and it described a special envoy, a person who is sent by one government to represent it in dealing with another government. So the ruler didn't have to go. He sent his apostle. So when the Lord used the word apostle, the people knew exactly what he was talking about. We didn't. We just thought it was something to fill in space in the Bible. And so they were sent out for the purpose of expanding the dominion of that king's empire. And many of them were military generals who were given power and authority by the king to go into new territories to establish their culture in that region. Their commission was this, to subdue, conquer, convert, instruct, train and establish the new subjects in the culture of their kingdom. And this would make them productive citizens in this new kingdom. Everybody gets it but the church. Why? Because the devil will fight you tooth and toenail to keep you in ignorance so we can't fulfill the Great Commission. If we don't fulfill the Great Commission, the devil takes nations and rules them and prolongs his stay. Him and demons, the rest of the demons, prolongs their stay on the earth. Because when the gospel is preached, the Lord says, when it's preached to every nation, everybody hears it, then the end shall come. You know who heard that? Satan. So how do you stay if you're saved? Do all you can to keep the Great Commission from being fulfilled. How is he going to do that? Get the church to live out her life in their generation in ignorance. Hey, Ryan, tell my dear apostle, you can't tell me what you ain't over me. Ah. In the body of Christ, we're all equal. But the way the church is set up, by God, there's rank and order. And if you don't understand rank and order, you just disconnected from the Great Commission. I can't hear nobody up in here. So, with that said, let me get, who give me five minutes? That's three hours. Get a new CD. Yeah. And you can, you can put the second CD, put it part two. Now, I want to show y'all something. The Greek word for apostle is, is on, put it on the, on, on the other screen as well. It's apostolos. But this word got a lot of history. And I want to give you a little bit of it just so you can see what this word means. When you say sent one, is a whole lot behind that. But if you don't know what comes behind it, you'll keep trying to move forward without clear understanding. Here's a dip, deeper meaning of apostle or ap apostolos, which is a sent one. Apostle was also called the admiral of a fleet of ships. About 400, watch this, 400 years, I did my homework. About 400 years before Christ came, the Greek word apostolos, sent one, it's the same as apostle, was a naval term, 
not not your navel, but navy, navel. It was a naval term used to describe an admiral. The fleet of ships that travel with him and the specialized crew who accompanied and assisted the admiral. The fleet would be sent out to sea on a mission to locate territories where civilization was non-existent. Once an uncivilized region was identified, the admiral along with his specialized apostolic crew and all their cargo and belongings would disembark, settle down, and work as a team to establish a new community. That's how America got started. Then they would begin the process of transforming a strange land into a replica of the life of life as they knew that it should be. Their purpose was total colonization of an uncivilized territory. Within this special fleet of ships were both the personnel and the cargo required to establish a new culture a new life, and a new community. Wow. When that fleet, everybody say fleet. When that fleet pulled up, from the, pulled up to the shore, it contained workers trained to build roads, construct buildings, and teach uncivilized natives how to read, write, and function in a new kind of a society. Thus, the admiral or the apostle became the team leader for the construction of a new society. Ah! He was called the admiral of a fleet of ships. Watch this. A fleet of ships. The word fleet, it actually means a group of ships, aircrafts, and vehicles that move and work together, controlled by one leader. It was a lot of people to establish this new kingdom or to expand this kingdom in this uh, uncivilized territory. The world is uncivilized compared to the kingdom of God. And we've been sent to expand his kingdom. We think because we told, I told him about Jesus. I said, Jesus loves you and he'll save your soul. What you doing, little Craig? I'm expanding the kingdom. That kingdom ain't expanding. Because you only said a piece. The admiral, it wasn't just him on a ship. It was a fleet because what comes with the fleet is a specialized crew what does this word crew mean crew is a group of highly skilled people working together to fulfill a vision under one foreman. You see how far the church is off? We come, we having church. 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 We having church. And we have not expanded the kingdom. Why? Because we don't see the Great Commission. And since I don't see it, I've disconnected from it. And I'm trying to get there, wherever there is, in my own power. God gave me, he anointed me. Your anointing is supposed to be for this. If you disconnect with your anointed self, you know who you become like? Satan. I ain't no devil. The Lord anointed Lucifer. Or God took that anointing back. No, no, no. He anointed him, and he never apologizes for what he gives you. When I go sideways, 
that anointing becomes perverted. Why has the devil been so successful at stopping the church? Because he understands ruling cities and nations. The church has had been dumbed down to a narrow vision. Me. And if I'm looking at me, I can't see a nation. I can't even see a neighborhood. Matter of fact, I can't see my family. I can get kids, but I can't father them. I can, I can have kids, but I can't mother them. I can get married, say I do, have a big ring, but can't be a spouse. And because the church has not seen this, you know what is going on? The world spins into darkness in a weird, wild way. Because we start defining stuff that God established. We redefine it. Look at that. There ain't nothing but the devil. And the Lord is like, where are my people? Where's the admiral and his fleet? How come the admiral doesn't have a fleet? Because the crew won't let God make them specialize in their gifting. You don't know what you got. We're just trying to get. And God's like, your gift, it's in the word, will make. What does room mean? Go look it up. That's your homework. The gift going to make room for you? Much of the stuff that we're searching for, it's in that big picture. God raises up apostles. Folks say, how come you ain't planting churches? This is bigger than planting a church. We got to get you up to where we say, we got to go do this. And your hand go up, I'm in. Come on now. Specialized crew. Where we're going, they need to build roads. Where we're going, we need to have people that can go into the different spheres of influence. Train people how to be successful businessmen and women. Hello, according to the kingdom. You don't have to labor. You need to know how to wield the word of God. Signs, miracles, and wonders. Oh yeah, that's part of the package. Signs and wonders. Your heart, the heart of the ideal servant.